Hello everybody, my name is Hammock. So, I don't usually post Civ content on this channel, I've actually been meaning to do it, it's just it's really hard to edit down games that usually go on for like 8 to 10 hours. Uh, but, I do play it a lot, I've got about 3,000 hours, over 3,000 hours on Civ 6, it's a very fun game, I love it. I've been playing it for ages, it's a great game to play when I'm multitasking, like I have it in the background whenever I'm like watching shows or streams or movies and stuff like that, because I need to multitask. And there's just been a video dropped for the new Frontier Pass, and I want to go over it because I am excited. Are, are we ready? We going? The audio is going. Can you hear me? Speak. Can you see me? And video's going. Ethiopia. Welcome to the developer update for the Ethiopia pack, the second DLC of the Civilization VI New Frontier Pass. We're here to introduce you to some of the pack's new game content. But first, for those of you who've purchased the New Frontier Pass, this update will also include our new leader persona, oh. Roosevelt and Catherine de' Medici. I have to say, really love the design work on this. It looks really fancy. Teddy is an interesting historical figure, because on the one hand, he had an interesting definition of diplomacy, given his big stick philosophy. But on the other hand, <laughs> he's also a staunch conservationist. Rough Rider Teddy shows him in all of his hard-charging new frontier glory. Okay. So, same base stats as America, but they get the plus five combat strength and fighting on their continent, so when someone's being rude, you can just be like, hey, can you stop it, or I'm gonna declare war on you. Or, you know, you can just kill all of them. And envoys sent to sea states get an extra uh, bonus whenever you're trading with them. So if you have, like, a sea state next to, next to you that you really like, you can just stack envoys on it a lot faster. And if someone declares war on them, you can beat the crap out of them. And it's only this version of Teddy that unlocks the unique Rough Rider unit. So I'm really interested to see what the... Um, what the base Teddy Roosevelt is going to be now if he doesn't have the Rough Rider, if he has like a extra buff now. His ability, the Roosevelt Corollary, still gives units additional combat strength on their home continent, but now also counts envoys sent to city-states that you have a trade route with as two envoys. Bull Moose Teddy uses Teddy's existing art and focuses on his passion for nature and high appeal tiles. Meanwhile, our alternate Queen of Brands persona focuses on collecting as many copies of luxury resources as possible and allows her to initiate the Court Festival project in any city with a theater square, which awards culture and tourism based on the number of excess copies of the luxury resources that France possesses. Okay, so this is pretty cool. So instead of having the higher diplomatic visibility, which is pretty insane because not only does it give you information on the AIs, but it also gives you more combat strength. Uh, you now get this instead, which gives you more culture, and it seems, seems pretty strange, because generally if you have a lot of excess uh, luxury resources, you want to be trading them to get like extra gold, and maybe to swap with other luxury resources, so this makes you want to play a lot more selfish. Like, you want to just grab a lot of land, play pretty wide in the early game so that you can have a strong chance of a culture victory later, because culture victories are generally only practical after like 20 or so cities. And all the luxuries you get, you're be like, I'm not trading with you, I need my culture, mate. Now, the big themes of DLC 2 are faith, diplomacy, and intrigue. The centerpiece of the pack is, of course, our new civilization, Ethiopia. What's that? Is that fire in the center? Yeah. Its unique ability grants extra faith from international trade routes. Oh, that must be like a unique building. With that faith to help you claim a culture victory. We'll be dropping oh, nice. the first look later this month, so stay tuned uh, for all the details on that civilization and their leader. This pack introduces a new district, the Diplomatic Court. Oh. This is your hub for... Wait, so this, yeah, it's like the same color as the government one, but it's like... Different one, sorry. Foreign policy and international relations. Mechanically, the diplomatic quarter grants additional culture for each delegation or embassy from a foreign civ. Jesus! Okay, so when I generally play civ, I play it with a bunch of mods that make the true start location a lot better, so you can actually play it with like pretty much every civ. Although the newer civs have kind of broken pantheons, but 
you could play it with like every Civ, and then like the world is a little bit changed, and it's geographically incorrect, so Japan doesn't just have like two tiles. Um, but <laughs> this is going to be insane for that. It's like I just set this up, and I've it, it declared an embassy with forty other civilizations. Am I going to get like forty culture? Jeez. It also reduces the level of enemy spies targeting that district <sighs> and adjacent districts. Oh, that's going to be so good for like. Because usually whenever I get spies, I just use them all defensively. Because, like, when you get into the late game, the AI just spams spies on your, like, on your base trying to steal your gold and trying to, like, disrupt rocketry and trying to break dams and spawn in barbarians in your neighborhoods. So this is going to make city planning a little bit easier, not having to, like, necessarily dedicate always having a spy. Or maybe just stacking it with an existing spy, just making it very unlikely. So you could, you could set it up so, like, you already have, like, your cluster where you've got, like, your commercial hub, you've got your government plaza, you've got your industrial square. If you're playing, like, Germany or Netherlands and getting that strong, like, industrial, like, complex, and then you have to spy around that. And then you can have this somewhere else and then set up where your neighborhoods are going to be later on so you have a lot of housing for a very tall city. It's so powerful. You can only have one in your civilization at a time. The consulate provides additional influence points every turn. Influence points, enemy spies levels reduced by one. I get extra science and gold. And reduces the level of enemy spies when they target that city or cities with encampments. Meanwhile, cities with encampments. Wait. That, okay, that gives me even more reason to build encampments. I generally already build encampments because I really like military engineers. Military engineers is probably one of my favorite units in the game because it has like a lot of cool stuff. Especially if you're playing as England, it has a lot of extra buffs. But like, oh man. And like, obviously the extra like city defense of having the garrison. Because I like, whenever I play, I go like, I, whenever I'm playing wide, which is generally my play style, since I tend to play a lot of like England or like Rome, I'll like get Magnus with provision to spam out settlers. And then with my next like couple of like government, uh, government, uh, governors, I'll, like, get Victor so that I can get the ability to uh, have the... I can't remember what the promotion is called, but the one that gives you extra loyalty for t adjacent cities for when you're, like, conquering or if you're defending against people trying to conquer you when you have, like, a bunch of cities that are, like, fresh and undefended. And the one next to it, which makes it so new units you create get a free promotion, because that's pretty valuable. Because another thing you can do is later on you can move that to your you can move Victor to your capital, so when you get the extra government uh, building that gives you a spy, it instantly starts with a free promotion, which is a very good thing to have as a spy. While the Chancery will grant additional science each time your civilization captures or kills an enemy spy to prevent envoys from becoming uh, even more influence points uh, when civilization captures or kills an enemy spy. Oh crap! It's so good for like defensively playing as like a science civ, and um, also going to be pretty good on Gilgamesh with the Better Balance game, where you can already get like a ton of influence points, or someone like Georgia. Too powerful. Envoy bonuses are now directly tied to these two buildings as well. Finally, for playing okay. Storm Arise and Fall, the Ethiopia pack also introduces secret societies. What? Options carefully because uh, no, there's no take backs, and there's no Nice chair, by the way. I have that chair. It's very good. No do-overs. There's no, there's no do-overs. Once your membership is confirmed, you're a member for life. I mean, um, for the rest of the game. You'll be fine. Secret societies offer benefits. Oh, what? Discover the society. You have discovered a mysterious society called the Hermetic Order and earned one covenant title. What is this? Is this flavor text? A wandering mystic appears at your palace. His body is covered in writing of a kind that you've never seen before. The symbols even seem to shine with their own accord. He begins to lecture, uh, lecture your courtiers about hidden alchemical properties of matter, about how mercury can be induced, can be induced to flow towards the sound of birdsong, how elemental sulfur can be rendered out of sacred texts, about how the written Hidden resonance of certain stones in moonlight. He asks you, do you too seek to know the true nature of things? Holy crap. Are we going darkest dungeon? I'm in. Holy. 
crud. Four unique promotions. These we, the Hermetic Order of Society of Unorthodox Scientists and Alchemists. Their work focuses on science, great people, and resources. <laughs> oh my god. I, I, okay. Because, like, there's... It's Civ started out as sort of like, okay, it's history, but you know, it's a little bit, it's a little bit changed. A little, each of the leaders are a little bit um, cranked up, their sort of personality is amplified. And then as they started releasing more and more things, it sort of started being a little bit unrealistic. And, I'm, and I get what, I guess some people probably don't like that, but I really like that this is getting a little bit sort of weird. I, uh, this, is, this is pretty interesting. Unlocked by discovering a natural wonder reveals the ley line resource. Ley lines give standard adjacency bonus to all specialty districts. What? These governors operate in worldwide networks. I know they're gonna explain it to me, but I want to read it first. To a specific city. Promotion effects offered by secret <gasps> society governors apply to your whole sieve. But who are these societies that who are they? Signing up for? Yowza Minerva are puppeteers who mastermind plots behind the scenes and use espionage to achieve their goals. Oh my god. Owls of Minerva, secret society. Oh, look at that owl, that's cute. The Owls of Minerva are a secret group of high placed and wealthy individuals. They focus on government, trade, and espionage. Okay, so Russia. Unlocked by sending an envoy to a city state. Plus one economic policy. Wait, so. There's a ch is there a chance you can get this once you send an envoy to a city state? Because one extra economic slot in the early game sounds really strong because then you can get like production and faith for a pantry and you don't have to choose. Oh my god. I hope. Hmm. I feel like this could drastically change how the game is played. But I'm also kind of into that since I've been playing for so long. It's going to be tricky trying to keep track of all this. Unlocked in the medieval era. Uh, it looks like they all have, like, initiation ritu ritual doctrine. They seem to follow the same, like, trend. Allows you to construct the gilded vault building, a powerful replacement of the bank. Okay. An indoctrination. Plus one wildcard policy. That's a lot. Plus two spy capacity. Your cities gain plus four loyalty per turn and plus one amenity when your spies in their territory. Holy crap. So good. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. This <laughs> gives access to the Gilded Vault. This new building has all the benefits of the bank but also provides your commercial hub's gold adjacency bonus as culture and grants an additional trade route for cities with a harbor. Oh, nice. That sounds really nice. It's like Mansa Musa or like. If you're playing like TSL and you have very little real estate, like England or Scotland, getting an extra trade route sounds very nice. The Hermetic Order values alchemy and occult science above all else. Their success comes from nice. theories and inventions that... Oh, wait, do we have more? Uh, the Alchemical Science Building. Place the university. Unlocked industrial area. For every great person... And ley lines receive plus one yield equal to the great person's district type. And great admirals, great generals provide plus one science. Wait, this sounds really bonkers on somebody like Brazil. <laughs> Other societies dismiss. Or maybe. Oh, wait, like base Russia, because I've been playing like a ton of better balanced game because it like. Adds, adds a bunch of extra variation and tweaks to some of the, like, lesser played civs. But, like, in base game, without better balance game, Russia gets so many great, like, people, like, more great people than you would ever, like, need. You just get so many, like, writers from building your, like, lavas. So this, you, if you go, like, if you manage to get Hermetic Order, I imagine it's, like, you maybe get this as an option instead of it being random, because if it was random, it would be kind of... Annoying. It would be nice to go into the game being like, I want to make secret society, um, fucking secret society Korea or something like that. Um, but like, yeah, getting like massive amounts of like culture as like Russia. Holy crap. Such as ley lines, a new map resource only they can see. 
which gives standard adjacency bonuses to all specialties. Holy crap. I can even grant... Wait, so it says you get this discovered when you find a natural wonder, so I imagine they only spawn near natural wonders, perhaps. Is that also lim is a limiting factor? ...whenever a great person is earned. Members of the society can build the Alchemical Society. Ooh, that building looks so sick. ...that has all of the base university effects. But it also provides extra great merchant points. Great That's so much stuff, look at that. ...engineer points, increased production, and gold. Perhaps from some lead lying around somewhere. The Void Singers follow a dark religion. Oh. My. God. We have Cthulhu in Civ! Ah, oh, Ayak. Ayak Cthulhu. Ayak Hydra. The Void Singers are a nihilistic cult of dark elder gods. They focus on religion, relics, and <laughs> disloyalty. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh yes. Oh my god. Time to play as Rome and worship fucking Satan. Let's go. Uh, discovered when finding a tribal village allows you to construct the old god obelisk building, a powerful replacement on a monument. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. Uh, cities earn extra gold, science and culture per turn, equal to 20% of their faith per turn. Oh my god, you can get so much faith per turn in, like, Civ, like, faith is generally kind of like a low-value, like, resource, like, because you can just get so much of it from, like, just, like, you can get, like, the Pantheon that gives you, like, extra faith per, like, the appeal of, like, a tile, and if you're playing wide, you're just gonna get so much of that, and, like, if you get, like, natural wonders, if you play it, if you get the, like, plus two faith for, like, every like, city following your religion outside of your empire, and then you play some like, Arabia, where you want to do that, because you get extra science. Holy crap, you're gonna get, like, so much faith per turn, and then, like, oh my god. <laughs> Indoctrination. Uh, <laughs> unlocks the cultist unit. Wait, is that, like, the cultist from the one that, like, just summons, like, natural disasters? I wonder how that works if you have it with the same... The same, um, if you have, like, Apocalypse Mode enabled with this. This unit's purchased with faith and uses charges to reduce loyalty in foreign cities and generate relics of the void. Wait, are there, like, special relics? Oh my god, I wonder if they have, like, different stats or something, or if they're just, like, custom. So you're like, ah, yes, the, um, the Shard of Wood of the Cross of Jesus and the, uh, Bath water of Jesus from the future, and then we have this fucking relic of like Cthulhu had like fucking s completely crushed a city in an another timeline, and here's just a fucking squashed fucking like remnants of a person that's now fossilized or something. I don't know, something fucking strange. That's probably just going to be like statues of tentacles. Master plan. I'm not the atomic era. I look. Dark summoning? A city project that provides a lot of faith while active, and upon completion, raises raises the amount of loyalty damage done by cultists. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, hear me out. Play really wide, have a bunch of cities with holy sites, so you can just keep spamming that project to get a ton of faith, which also amplifies all your science and culture. Play Eleanor of Aquitaine. <laughs> And have a fucking, like, court of love death cult where you get these cultists, send them to neighboring cities, loyalty bomb them, and then they flip over to your civilization because you're Eleanor of Aquitaine. Holy fuck. Oh no. <laughs> this is gonna be mental. Oh no. Ancient gods and sow chaos to control adversaries. Joining them unlocks the old god obelisk, which replaces- Oh, that was what was in the Ethiopia city, the obelisk. That looks cool. The monument has all of the monument's base effects and provides additional faith and great- Unit of the Void Singles replaces the monument, contains one great work slot that can hold any type of great work. I assume that's so they can hold the extra relics. <gasps> Wait, relics? Oh no, wait. 
Oh. Congo. <laughs> oh no, Congo or Khmer or Poland. Oh, the Poland fucking Cthulhu cult. Jesus. All those yields. Oh my god, I'm gonna have. To, I think like the first game I'm gonna play on this like patch is gonna be like Congo, Poland, and then just like. If if there's a way you can control to get these secret societies, make like a like a void singer cult with Congo and then just get all these extra relics and just watch the world burn. Oh I guess it'd be different with Congo because you don't really have a lot of ways of generating faith since you can't build holy sites. Oh man, imagine this with teamers. Like you have like Someone like Arabia and someone as Congo, and you're both like void singers, <laughs> and you're just like, let's watch the world burn and get all these relics. Great work slots. The void singers also have a unique unit. Oh the cultists. God, they look Purchasing cool. Faith, cultists can spend a charge to recruit followers in enemy cities, reducing the target city's loyalty. Vessel of Nyalafotep. So there's tentacle statues. That looks rad. Holy crap. Display the temple, hurrah. By calling its citizens to madness. The Sanguine Pact is oh. a regime known for Wait. sapping energy Sanguine. and will to fight, shunning the sunlight and absorbing nutrients through the blood of their... And these are vampires. Yeah, they're definitely... I was, thinking, I was thinking at first this was Aztec, but vampires? Joining the pact on... Oh my god. That looks so sexy. Locks the unique vampire unit. Which gains combat strength when adjacent units perish. Holy fuck! <laughs> Blood magic! Oh no, we're gonna have Aztec vampires. Jesus. Instead of dying, vampires retreat to safety with one HP. But they don't die? They can be healed back to full with some good pillaging. Vampire castles can be placed in any empty tile in your territory or in neutral territory. Oh, what? And extra yields. Oh, I think this is too much for my brain. That's so insane. <laughs> We're gonna have vampires as well. Oh, I've been like watching the new season of um, What We Do in the Shadows. Amazing show. Highly recommend it. Very funny. My favorite guy is the um, energy vampire. I relate to him on an emotional level. But holy fuck. And in later eras, I'll allow you to teleport. Oh. Vampire secret society. Who would be the best one to be? I mean, Aztec comes to mind because they're already going to be pillaging and like attacking people and getting slaves. But ugh, who would be good for vampires? Um, I mean, those tile yields look pretty insane. How many can you build? Let me just go back. Vampires. Yeah, they're definitely vampires. Joining the pact unlocks the unique vampire unit. Which gains combat strength when adjacent units perish. Instead of dying, vampires retreat to safety with one HP and can be healed back to full with some good pillaging. Vampire castles can. So, mate, like this says with good pillaging, I imagine you have to do the pillaging for the vampire. If it's general pillaging, then Norwegian vampire cult? Oh, that could be kind of great. Oh my god. Can be placed in any empty tile in your territory. Any em any empty tile or in neutral territory. Grant in neutral territory. Oh crud! Defensive bonuses and extra yields. And in later era. Wait, how, does he have build charges, or is it? Yeah, he does have build charges. Okay. Territory or in neutral territory. Grant defensive bonuses and extra yields. And in later eras, allow you to teleport units between. Them. So there you have it, the faith. Wait, I didn't hear that the first time. Allows you to teleport units between them. You can have aerodome castles where people just go and just like fucking bat form out of it. It's just like, well, time to attack this castle. Never mind, let's bring in the vampire death robots. Crush, kill, destroy, swear. The diplomacy oh no. And the intrigue of four new secret societies with- This is a lot. This is a lot. Best fans in gaming. No, you. With all the latest Civ news, be sure to follow our social channels. Next month, we'll be talking about the free content coming your way in the next game update. Thank you for joining us. And remember, when you enter the vaulted halls of the elite, make your choices carefully. There's always one more turn. Give me a high five if you love Civ. Doggy. Oh, double high five. Doggy, that's a good doggy. That's a good papa.
Oh my god. Wait, July 23rd? Oh crap. Ten days from now. Oh, that's a lot. First impressions? That sounds fantastic. Oh my god. I like that there's more of this, like, fantasy stuff coming in. Because, like, uh, when I was playing, like, TSL a lot, whenever I play Rome, you start right next to Mount Vesuvius, which is usually a ball lake, because whenever it goes off, you're like, oh, great, one population Rome again, nice. But then a couple times, I'm like, I have this, like, mod um, that adds a bunch of extra religions, so the, like, the, like, uh, re the visual, like, icon of the religion, there's, like, a bunch of historical ones, which is very nice. And, like, there's one that literally looks like the, um, the Satan, like, penta pentagram thing, and I'm just like, yeah, let's do a, let's do a, a volcano, a volcano cult. And I did that before, like, the apocalypse thing, and I was just like, yeah, let's, let's just worship the, the purging fires and go crusade and stuff like that. And then apocalypse mode came out, and I'm like, oh my god, this is amazing. And now I'm like, okay, okay. Okay, game. We're gonna worship the the void singing volcano, the volcano where Cthulhu's tentacles are gonna rise up from the earth core, like darkest dungeon. I mean, <laughs> this this is this is gonna be good. Oh, oh my god.